Hello, my name is Kishmani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishmani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve, or rather problems that we are about to solve, are the ones that you will find on page number 81. Please start with page number 81, and today is our lesson number 30. These are practice problem. The two, two practice problems that you see there on page number 81. Number one. Number one says that uh, we have this guy who needs three and a half feet of red wire. He needs five and one third feet of green wire. We also told that he needs one and three quarter feet of yellow wire. And the question simply is how many total feet does he need? Let's find out, shall we? We simply have to add up the three figures, that's all. So we have five, three and a half plus five and one third plus one and three quarter. What we're going to do is we're going to take care of the fractions first separately and then we're going to worry about the whole number. The whole numbers are easy. Three plus three plus five is eight, eight plus one is nine. So that's very easy. Let's figure out the sum of the sum of the fractions first. Let's do it here. One half plus one third plus three quarter. So what can we find? Uh, what can we find here as the common denominator? A number that we can that is divisible by three, two, three, and four, and that number would be twelve. How do we convert the bottom part one half, the bottom bottom part of the one half, which is two, into a twelve? Or multiply the top and the bottom by six. Multiply half by six. And by doing so, now we have a denominator of 12. How do we convert the 3 into a 12? We multiply top and bottom by 4. How do we convert the 4 into 12? Multiply it by 3 over 3. There we go. Now we have these three fractions that we can very easily add because they all have the denominator of 12. They have a common denominator. So let's do it, shall we? So we get 12. 6 plus 1 is 6. 4 plus 1, 4, 4 plus 4 times 1 is 4, 6 times 1 is 6 is what I meant to say, 4 times 1 is 4, and then 3 times 3, 3 times 3 is going to give us 9. So we have 4 plus 6, which is 10, 10 plus 9 is 19. So we get 19 over 12, and of course 19 over 12, 19 over 12 can be written as 12 over 12 plus 7 over 12, and 12 over 12 is just 1. So it boils down to 1 and 7 12. 1 and 7 12 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9. So this part was 9, and that part, this part here, we just found out is 1 and 7 12. So the total is 9 plus 1, which is 10, and 7 12. Very good. That's all there is. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Let's move on to the next one. We are done with this one. Just give me one second here. A quick break. Number two. In number two, number two is a, is a bit tricky. I'll tell you why. We are told that the cost of an item is forty-two dollars and twenty cents. We are also told that the tax, let me read the question to you from the book, let me read it to you verbatim. It says, if you purchase items that have total costs of $42.20 before taxes, that is, how much tax will you pay if the tax is, and they go on to say the tax is 0 0.065 cents per dollar. That is not what they meant to say. This is a misprint. This part is a misprint. What they say, meant to say is 
not 0 0.065 cents per dollar, it is 6.5 cents per dollar. That's what they meant to say. In other words, it's six and a half percent. The tax is tax is six and a half percent. So let's find out what is six and a half percent of forty two twenty, shall we? Let's do it here. This is the third time that we have found a misprint in this book. And I keep track of it, I keep a log of it. This, so this was page number 81. If you recall, we found a misprint on page number 64 when we were doing page 64. And we also found a misprint on page number 60, if you recall, when we were doing those problems. So, so far it's, it's a hat trick. This is the third one. I know it's my accent sometimes that gives you trouble. Hat trick is what I said. You see, three times in a row. This is the third time we found this print. Let's do it here, shall we? $42.20. And we are told it is 6.5 cents per dollar. Now listen very carefully, okay? You, you must pay attention to your units. We multiply $42, as I said, listen very carefully, $42.20. These are dollar amount, $42.20. This is expressed in dollars. And this is 6.5 cents per dollar. So your unit for bottom part is 6.5, 6.5 cents per dollar. What's going to happen when you multiply the two quantities? Let's find out here, shall we? When we multiply the two quantities, $42.20, which is the dollar amount, times 6.5 cents per dollar, what happens? The dollar is going to drop out. And what we're going to left with what are, what we're going to left what we are going to be left with are it, rather what we are, what we're going to be left with is an amount expressed in cents. Expressed in cents. And at that point all we have to do is move it two decimal places. So keep that in mind. This this amount that we're going to get actually is in cents, not in dollars. Not only that, but when we multiply them, we're going to multiply them as four thousand 4,220 times 65. So we have to move three more places. So it's, we are going to ignore this part. Well, let's keep it here for time being. Okay, pay attention here. Final amount is going to be in cents after we after we have moved the three decimal places, two for here and one for here. Let's do it. Enough of the talk. So we're going to first multiply it by five. Five times zero is zero. Five times two is ten. Zero. Carry one. Five twos are ten. Plus one is eleven. Carry one. Five fours are. 5 for the 20 plus 1 is 21. So that part is done. 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 2 is 12. Carry 1. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1 is 13. 3. Carry 1. 6 for the 24 plus 1 is 25. That's the 3. Let me rewrite it. That's the 3 and that's the 2. 3 and 2. 0, 0, 3. 472. Now we take care of our decimal. Here we have two places, one, two, and here we have one. So altogether we have to move our decimal by three places. This our decimal is right here. Move it three places, one, two, and three. Right here we end up right there. But what does this represent? What this represents is 274 cents. As we can see, dollars cancel out and we left with cents. That's your tax. Your tax is 274 cents. So the tax amount, tax amount is 274 cents or 2.74 dollar. Depending on how the answer choices are presented in the exam, if the answer choices are presented in cents, well how does the question what does the question ask? How many dollars or what? How much tax will you pay if the tax is oh round the answer to the nearest cent. Oh, interesting. Round the answer to the nearest cent. Well, in that case, the answer is this. 274 cents is what we're going to pay. And the reason why they say round it to the nearest cent is because, in technically speaking, it is 274.3 cents. Well, you can't have three tenths of a cent, can you? So round it to the nearest cent. What is 274 cents is what you're going to pay in taxes. Do you understand? That's all. That's all it is. It does touch a nerve, actually, for me, because where I live, in Connecticut, I'm venting my frustration here for whatever it's worth very quickly. Where I live in Connecticut, we used to have a sales tax of 6%, which was very easy. Figuring out 6% of anything is simple. You just multiply it by 6. If I can figure out 6% of 300, that's no problem at all. It's just 3 times three times 6, which is $18.80. Uh, or rather, $18. That's what 
six percent of three hundred is eighteen dollars because six percent of one hundred is six dollars. But then the state got greedy, and now our tax rate is six and a quarter percent, which is annoying as hell. It's out of my system. I feel better. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.